Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt here with Techno Buffalo, and what I've got for you guys today is a tutorial on making the switch from being an iMovie user to a Final Cut user. Now, all you PC guys out there, don't get mad. I'm also planning on doing one, doing Windows Movie Maker to Sony Vegas or something along those lines, but for today, it's gonna be iMovie to Final Cut. Let's go ahead, get started. So one of the biggest hurdles that iMovie users face when they're switching to Final Cut is really just a mental one. When you first get it open, you see all these options and it's somewhat overwhelming. But the good news is that for the vast majority of users, 90% of this stuff you are never going to need as it's really meant more for the pro level users out there. The other good news is that the interface you're accustomed to in iMovie has direct correlations with the interface in Final Cut. So what we're gonna learn is how you can translate the moves you already know how to do in iMovie into Final Cut. So what's the first thing you do in iMovie? You import your footage into an event, right? Where well, a similar thing happens in Final Cut, except it's just named differently. You have what's called bins, and the way to think of these is as your events are in iMovie, and it's just a collection of raw video clips. And what you can do is you can make a new bin in Final Cut, and then just go ahead and drag all your footage into it for easy organization. You'll notice it comes up as a list view instead of as thumbnails. Well, it's easy to change that so you can get to the clip that you want simply by right clicking inside the bin and selecting icons. Your next step is to find the clip that you want and bring it into what's called the viewer. Now the way to think of the viewer is, is a space for you to edit the clip before bringing it into your final product, which is shown in the screen next to it, the canvas. Now in iMovie, these are all combined into one screen, but Final Cut simply splits them into two. Most people's next step in iMovie is to select their in and out points of their clips and then drag them into their project window where they want them. Well, you do something similar in Final Cut. So here in the viewer, I'm going to scrub through and find where I want my clip to begin and end in my final product. Then I'm going to set the in and out points, either by selecting the buttons here on the screen or using the I and O keys. Now once that's done, I have a couple options. I can drag it to the canvas to insert it or drag it down to my main timeline. Now once I have it inserted, you'll notice in the canvas window what my clip is going to look like in the final product. Then, just like in iMovie, I'm going to repeat those steps until my video is sequenced how I want. It's easy to make changes as well. Just go into the timeline and click and drag, or double click on the clip and make the adjustments in the viewer. One of the things people really love about iMovie is the ease with which you can add transitions and effects. Well, you can do the same thing in Final Cut. It's just laid out a little differently. Here in the browser window, if you look at the top, you see an effects tab. And that's where we'll see all the built-in filters and transitions. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the cross dissolve transition and place that into my timeline. And now the clip is going to have a nice fade to it in the finished product. You can fine tune those filters and effects by double clicking on a clip to bring it into the viewer and clicking on the filters or motion tab at the top of the viewer window. So this is a good time to talk about something you will not encounter in iMovie, and that is rendering. For example, let's take this effect and drag it to the timeline. Now you notice at the top of the timeline window, there's a little red bar appearing up there, and that indicates that this part of my sequence is not rendered. And you can see when I hit play, it actually comes up as unrendered in the canvas. So what you want to do is, is go ahead and go to the top of Final Cut under Sequence, and then render that selection. Now that's going to allow you to see the video play in real time. Keep in mind that you'll encounter unrendered selections not just for effects and transitions, but also for certain video formats as well. Okay guys, final step, and that is exporting. In iMovie this is pretty easy. You go to the Share menu, and in Final Cut you get two different options really. You can go ahead and export to QuickTime and pick a format you want to use, and I would recommend this if you don't really care about file size. Your second option is to export using QuickTime conversion. Now what this is going to do is give you some presets specifically for certain situations. Now you can of course go to the options for all these different presets 
and then tweak them to fit your specific needs. There you guys have it, the basics of switching from iMovie to Final Cut. A good question to ask yourself though is do you actually need to make the switch? iMovie is a very capable program on its own and can do some really great things. Well, either way, hopefully this was helpful for you, and I'll see you in the next video.